expect two elected... Ex are they elected? Officials of, well, how can you expect two officials of the union who are nationwide officials to uh, give up their job as a result of a decision taken by one area? Because there's over half the, half the New Zealand union in, in Red River. Mr Hamilton, do you tend to resign? The only matter if I did, looks like a rebel would certainly take over a well-conducted union. On those circumstances, no, because nothing has been put forward to warrant my resignation. An industrial scene notable for moderation and good employer employee relations has turned into something which one could describe as anarchy. And there are avowed communists pitting unionists against unionists. We've got untold cases of ourselves being involved in disputes and Hamilton selling us down the drain. He cannot front us up. He runs away all the time. Well, we've got uh, a person who's doing a lot of the talking and uh, allegations against myself uh, is the chairman of the Red River branch of the Red China Association. Also, there was six people in October 75, four who were involved in Kaingara, did a trip to Red China with all expenses paid, and they have brought this matter back. And if they want to take over control of this union, which is, a, which is run democratically, a very financial union, and then the harm it could do to the country the power they would control. So at any price, you must get control of that union.
Well, when I first arrived here in 1950, to my first week on the job, one of our, the workers I was working beside had all his fingers cut off. Where I'm working, the department I'm working in, uh, which consists of 18 men per shift, two shifts, our accident rate was uh, about three a week. Yeah, in the old days we worked on a bonus system and uh, we still have it now and instead of clearing around the bloody trees all the shit away, we used to just crash in and scarf it and back cut it. And uh, my incident was I'd back, I scarfed and back cut about 18 trees and I'd come back to this one and I scarfed and back cut it and I let it go. I put the back cut in, let it go, went down the line of trees and then the third one down, slipped out and come back. There was too much wood holding on the bottom. Come back and because all the shit was around me, I got smacked right across the shoulder, smashed my shoulder back and drove me into the ground. I was lucky to live out of that one and that was the end of the bonus system for me. Stuff it. There's one example, uh, the inserted tooth saws, uh, which I work with as a benchman. Um, one of them dislodged and, you know, went through my uh, cheek and it was my jaw that stopped it, eh, going any further. And over the next few years, many of my fellow workers got killed on the job site. And so this raised the whole question of safety. And we found that the employers only paid lip service to safety. We found that the union only paid lip service to safety. And that if we wanted safety, we had to organise on the job ourselves. We had to form a sub-branch. <laughs> When we tried to organise on the job, we found we were up against the union officials. And uh, in one case, I think it was 1969, wasn't it, Tilly? Yeah. 400 of us marched on the union office to express our grievances. And just after this, they dissolved our sub-branch. So we had no organisation for many years on this job site. So this led us to look at the union itself. And uh, we our experience has shown us that our union is a dictatorship. We have one dictator, he has a handful of puppets around him, and we, the rank and file, have no say whatsoever in any of the decisions made in our union. All decisions are made from the top. It always appeared to me that uh, what the National Secretary said was what happened right throughout. So then he says, right, we've got to put this thing to a vote. He says whether we stay on strike or whether we accept this proposal and go back to work. So anyway, the vote went against him. So then he really does his thing. And this guy's a real comedian. Jumps up off the table, slams his fist on the desk there and says, right, I withdraw all union support. You're on your bloody own. Everybody sitting around the table would put their vote in for uh, the, the way the, the national secretary wanted things to go. That's, that's how it always appeared to me at a national conference. I think myself that, uh, that the blokes sitting around the table were very frightened to go against the national uh, officers. Well, what had happened with the ballot papers was that he was, um, he, he issued them out and any Tom, Dick or Harry could sign them. Even the bosses could fill them in. And there was no, there's no role of the union to, to account yeah, for who voted. Not. Hamilton had gone in on a Sunday afternoon and, and put through there, reprinted a whole lot of new voting papers because they'd run out. There was no record of where the vote was and it was also stated at that meeting by the same people that the returning officer was overseas when he was supposed to be returning the vote. It was against the union rules, against the, the, the rules that the national office had put out. For the likes of uh, Kangaroa, they were very frightened of a sub-branch starting there because of the people that were going to run the sub-branch. They were frightened of their political feelings. And they opposed the Kangaroa sub-branch very, very strongly. What was the feeling of the Murrapara sub-branch towards Hamilton? Well, the feeling is bad. 
Ray Hamilton did an injustice to us by uh, deregistering the sub-branch. And since, ever since, we have felt very sour about that. And we have had very little or no, de or no dealings with him ever since. And if he walks on the site, our men will walk off. That's our opinion, Hamilton. Hamilton was in the hall screaming about what a useless bunch of wankers we all were for following that commie prick Willie Wilson and Bill Jones stood up and said, now listen here, you can't fob off men in, in trouble um, because they have a communist leader or something and um, Hamilton told him he was just another fucking communist. Typical comms or people of this nature, you've got no principles of people. Hamilton still managed to sell us out by breaking up the gang we were in and sending us off down the road to put us amongst all the militants and isolate us in a pocket in the bush. And we were put in commentary because our closest we were to any other gang was about 20 miles. And they put us all down the, in that gang. And that's where we are still today. Uh, a welfare scheme has been set up by the, uh, by the timber workers, national officials. It's for the purpose of catering for the workers who are in dire, street, uh, dire straits at times. Uh, they do get this help, and I believe it's a good idea. But when they do come out of the crap, they get a bill from the national officials to pay the damn thing back. The Welfare Committee looks on this matter that if they expect the union to use its funds to pay irresponsible people who won't take out insurance policies and all the rest of it and make donations, what happens to the good people if they want welfare assistance? My grandfather's a member of the union for years here, and he was, he retired and he went and lived down the road here at Rear Fakaida and he was killed in a car accident. And Hamilton heard about it and wrote a little card to my grandmother, you know, condolences and be pleased to see you at any time. And she was a bit worried about um, cost of lawyers' fees and things like this, so she went along with myself and an uncle. And we went and we saw Hamilton. And Hamilton said, look, Mrs. Snell, don't you worry about anything. We'll arrange it all. He said, we've got our we, lawyers, we've paid retainers too. And since Charlie was such a good union member, we'll look after it. And about two fucking years later, my grandmother got a bill for it all. <laughs> Well, uh, to give you an idea, in 75 when I started, uh, things were pretty bad then. Uh, it was only some months after I started at Waipa when the Waipa took their first strike in the history of the Waipa sawmill. And it was through uh, union, not, uh, not uh, negotiating on behalf of the workers. I sat in a few meetings, and to me it was pitiful because the men used to sit there as meek as hang. Nobody would say a thing. And uh, I found out the reason was that if a lot of these guys spoke up, um, they'd have the dirtiest job uh, the boss could find on a Monday morning. The workers felt then that there was some, there was some uh, involvement between union and management. Lots of times on negotiations that I've sat on, he appeared to agree quite a lot with management. Yeah, when old Fat Guts does decide to come across here, or when he sees fit to come across here, the usual story would be that he goes to the company first and uh, they sort of tell him to jump and he says, how high, please. I was bloody got totally disgusted because it was so anti-worker, so anti-unionist, you know, that um, Hamilton is exactly what he's been called a lot of times, and that's a bloody parasite living off the bloody worker's back. Thank you. 
A stop work meeting was held in the gymnasium in Muruparra, and it was there that a complete discussion took place, and they decided that they would put forward ideas of a change in the constitution which would give membership more democracy. We had a meeting at Murupara uh, of delegates from all the major job sites uh, in the district and it was decided to form the combined council of delegates from the rank and file. This was the uh, hall where the uh, delegates from the combined sites in the South Auckland branch met to form the uh, combined council of delegates. Was structured with three delegates from the smaller job sites consisting of from 200 to 400 men and on the major site, Kinleath, it had nine delegates. We were supported by uh, good men. We were also supported by members of the paid officials of the South Auckland branch, naming uh, Henry Giesler and Ray Rogers. At this meeting, uh, I was nominated as a chairman, along with Mike Jacobs from KLC, and uh, I stood up and ex informed the meeting that I was a co member of the Communist Party of New Zealand. I was a communist, and my role in society was to smash the state system and change society, bring in socialism. And from there, the vote was taken and I won the election by 24 votes to 19. First time I come into contact with the CCD was at a all-out stop work meeting in Tokoroa. Um, to me, they came across strong, and uh, I thought personally they were godsend, and that they were able to portray to me, at any rate, and I felt everybody else in general at the meeting they were able to portray the. Um, a lot of the uh, undemocratic uh, things that were going on, you know, the, the corruption within the union. We visited uh, uh, Tasman first, and then Kinleath, and they found a strong support within those two sites, uh, Kainaro just after that, and this is what uh, prompted uh, the White Party delegates to report back to the workers on site, that with the strong following from these other sites, they felt that they recommended to Waipa that they join the CCD struggle. It seemed a bit pushy at first, you know, the way they were conducting a lot of these uh, moves. But after, I felt that, you know, there was uh, no other way you could uh, um, show your feelings or uh, gain whatever you were after. And, you know, we were after our democratic rights. We got almost unanimous support on all the sites in the, in the district for the CCD. So after we got that support, we went to the workers again with a plan of action. And the plan of action was that we would have 24-hour stoppages, we'd have marches on the union office, we'd stop union fees, we'd hold mass stop work meetings. And at that time, we actually believed that action, such drastic action, would be enough to get rid of Hamilton and Gray. Yeah, that's right. The uh, aim of the program was to show the employers uh, our strength and uh, that if they kept dealing with Hamilton, it would be costly profit-wise to them. And also to build a, uh, uh, a union 
on uh, democracy from control from the bottom up, not the top down as at present. Yeah, and because uh, this, this presented a lot of difficulties, because on, on some of the sites the workers hadn't had much experience of, uh, of struggle of this type, and, and in fact there were some workers who uh, thought we were going much too far. I thought it was unfair, and, and I uh, voiced my opinion at the meeting by asking if they had so, so much strong evidence against these two people for their actions and what they'd done to what was told to us, uh, wouldn't it have been better to have uh, got a solicitor to have uh, taken action and uh, brought these two before the courts? We were members of a, a timber workers union, and then along comes this crowd with this uh, CCD, and uh, to me it was, uh, it was highly illegal which was proved later on that it's illegal, it's outlawed and everything else. Illegal? Well, the laws of this country are made by the government and the employers. The workers don't have any say in that. So if the workers want to get anywhere, they have to disregard the law. And uh, the same applies to the constitution of our union. That, uh, that is designed to keep the workers in their place and keep the union officials in their position. So if we want to do anything, we have to ignore their laws too. And our constitution is so restrictive, there's no way we can get rid of them through the constitution or voting. So we had to take to the streets. Myself, I can remember quite clearly, and I'll remember for a very long time the sense of um, unity and the complete uh, membership of the South Auckland branch that were involved on this demonstration march, and even wives and that that were involved and in fully supporting their husbands in their stand against our union and its setup. And even once we got here to the union office, the feeling amongst the membership and when Hamilton and Gray actually fronted to the membership and tried to speak their way out of their predicament, in no way whatsoever were the membership going to wear it. I don't see any reason why I should resign. I've been in this union for six and a half years. I can have not done anything uh, that blankets my conscience. I don't think uh, anybody else has any proof on anything that I have done that warrants a resignation. So you've got no intention of resigning? No intention at all. How did the National Office try to defend themselves against the CCD challenge? Well, they, uh, they toured the country and they saw all the other secretaries. And they informed the secretaries that this CCD was an outlaw band, was not abiding to union rules, full of communists, that they were actually all communists. And uh, he was appealing to the uh, secretaries to tell the men that this was a full communist takeover. We learned of an emergency national conference uh, to be held in, uh, in this Prince Hotel here where the national uh, delegates had all gathered together and uh, we decided to have an emergency CCD meeting the night before and from that meeting it was resolved that we front up the national conference and state our case. Um, we did that, it was raining and uh, we were kept outside in the rain when I approached the national president and said that uh, Richardson that we wanted to put our case to the national conference and he said we don't want violence, we don't want violence, we, we'll, we'll go in there and discuss it and I said to them uh, we're men not animals and we're disciplined, we don't act in that way and so he went inside, came out and they admitted us to the conference. There was difference of opinion, the Murupara people wanted to put local autonomy as the main issue and the majority of us uh, delegates wanted to put union democracy. So. Uh, it was decided that I would be the only speaker. I spoke, stated our case, and told them we wanted union democracy in the South Auckland branch. Uh, they listened, and when I finished speaking, they decided to um, attack me personally by saying how much experience have I had in, um, in uh, union experience, etc. I retaliated that I hadn't had any experience in selling out, but I'd been a union member all my life. And there were old men all around the table. They were all old men, and 
One of them was so old he was dribbling and blibbering and he couldn't understand what was going on. He didn't even know what he was there for. From there we warned them that if they take any dangerous steps that it would involve all the timber workers in the South Auckland branch and we left. It was agreed by us that we would meet Bill Jones and uh, the South Auckland representatives after this national conference to see the outcome. Bill met us on the marae in uh, uh, Kotu and told us that they'd sacked the South Auckland branch. I suspend the South Auckland executive and Ray Rogers, the secretary. The national office would then take over the running and the control of the South Auckland branch and by doing that they could then declare the CCD as an illegal body of men. When Hamilton sacked the uh, two paid officials, we thought this had given us an opening to form a breakaway union. On going into this with a lawyer, we found out that the government had made rules blocking us from doing these things in an attempt to protect the likes of Hamilton and Gray. Well, with the breakaway union, that came in on this as a side issue. And in actual fact, we started to develop as the main issue rather than the changing of the constitution or the removal of the paid officials. But it was obvious that the men would have been fighting on too many different fronts. And this would have been a very drastic weakness. Several of us were against the idea of investigating the breakaway union because it would interrupt the plan of action. However, this was put to the vote and we lost. This was not well received by the workers, particularly Waipa, because it meant the cancellation of the mass stop work meeting. Yes, well, the Waipa men were angered because uh, the, um, as they felt that the, uh, the, when the CCD became involved, they'd taken over uh, some plans that they'd already made prior to their involvement with CCD. And they felt that if there was any further delays, this would weaken their battle, uh, particularly against the uh, union officials and the management. So at our meeting, they, uh, they uh, denied the request by the CCD and uh, they ordered that uh, we carry on with the 24-hour strike. Because the Waipa workers were so militant, they decided to stick to the original plan. And once they decided to have another 24-hour stoppage, it was necessary to get support. And we were able to get support at Kaingaroa and Kawarau, so as not to leave them isolated. Well, it was quite obvious by now that the idea of uh, a breakaway union wasn't a good one. And anyway, the South Auckland branch had been reinstated by Hamilton after the government and the employers had put pressure on the Federation of Labour to get him to reinstate the South Auckland branch. And uh, it was at this time that another diversion occurred at Kinley. Well, following our involvement with the, with the CCD, we, we then had a problem with an alleged theft. A guy was at work. Now, why should he not have the right to be present when his house is searched, not just go around there with no search warrant? Uh, the police searched the house and I believe they found nothing. But, you know, they just went around there and asked his wife and she, her being a passive sort of a woman, agreed to let them search the property. But then we, we went out on strike for the company's failure to abide by an agreed procedure and uh, following that, the rest of the Kinley site came out also, which shut the whole site down virtually for about seven days. It appeared that the uh, police search at Kinley was purposely provoked to divert everyone's attention away from uh, the CCD, which was growing in strength at the time. So an all-up meeting was called at Kinley with the uh, CCD invited. And at this meeting, um, it was agreed that an all-up meeting in Rotorua was necessary. And at this meeting in Rotorua, uh, the CCD discussed the idea of an all-out strike. His idea was it to go on an all-out strike? Well, he was born at uh, Kawarau, really, on the, uh, on the Tasman Timor. We felt that uh, because we had strength, 
and that uh, the momentum of the action against Hamilton and Gray is growing, rather than become stagnant, take the action, and the ultimate action will strike action. I visited all the sites continually several times during this dispute, and uh, the workers realized that um, the effect of this total stoppage would have a, a, a would be an attack on the employers also. But it didn't disturb anyone because they felt that Hamilton was the employer's agent, puppet amongst us, and that uh, he'd come out of one meeting at Kinley that he was saving them millions by allowing the KLC workers to have a difference in wage rates for the same jobs of about seven cents an hour alone. And therefore, Hamilton being the puppet he was, it was an attack against one of the same. What uh, alternatives were there to an all-out strike? Well, the alternatives we had looked at was the uh, legalities of the situation, of setting up of uh, our own uh, uh, timber workers' union on individual sites and so on. But these were all ruled out. We thought there was senseless doing this sort of thing. We either remain as one group or, or, or finish the thing altogether. How was the uh, strike going to get rid of Hamilton and Gray? Uh, uh, we, we felt that uh, because it would be so costly to the employers in, re in regards to profit and production that they'd uh, realised Hamilton was no longer any use to them and he was too costly and he had dumped them. Those are uh, all job sites that we represent. That's uh, uh, Kaingaroa Logging Company, Kaingaroa Forest, Waipa Mill, and Kinleith, of course, is still out and staying out, and Tasman Mill. Until they resign. Until they resign and somebody starts talking with us. We have no way of getting rid of them other than the action that we're taking. There's any amount of actions if their statements were correct. I've never known the Constitution ever to be given to the membership to have a say in it. There's government departments, there's solicitors, there's police department. In the history of the unions, I've never known any of this to be successful on behalf of the workers. If the struggle was to be coordinated, it was necessary to have one centre from which information and directions could go out and to which all sorts of information could come in. Um, it was situated in Rotorua, at my house, because Rotorua is a central place, and the structure of it was that the uh, executive of the Combined Council of Delegates uh, lived here during that period. Every town um, who supported the strike had their own welfare organisation set up. I believe Murupara uh, distributed uh, soup to the schools. They had their own various ways of um, raising their funds.
Mrs. Zorotaha, they had a terrific uh, welfare organization set up there, but if they wanted anything at all, any aid, well, they only had to call on us and we'd assist them. Uh, Kawero, their women spent a day here with me, um, and I showed them what we were doing here, how we were raising our money, and I believe they got off to a good start down that end. Murupa were very good. They swapped now and again. If they wanted potatoes, they'd give us beef or mutton. So we had a terrific thing going. Uh, Tokoroa, well, that was, they needed a lot of help there. So we sent up bags and bags and bags of potatoes from this end for them up there. And these buds were given to Maku. These farmers down here giving us a couple of paddocks. He was there for the people who needed them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorts of things that were going on. We had uh, workers from other unions arriving here with welfare, uh, food, money. We had phone calls coming in from members of parliament from the Federation of Labour. We had the press and the TV here, or ringing up here to get the latest information. Uh, we had uh, calls for welfare coming in, and we would um, send those calls on to the various welfare agencies. And finally, we were uh, printing leaflets and, and sending them out to all the various sites to keep the workers up to date with the progress. My husband has gone on working right through. He's a timber worker, is he? He's a timber worker. Has he had anything done to him? Uh, no, only in the buses. Uh, people have... He's told me, people have said to him recently, yes, you're working now, but boy, when we win this, you'll be out. You'll have to find other work because you won't be remaining here. Now, I ask you, Keep this whole up. thing, it makes me weep. As far as the capitalist press was concerned, they presented the struggle as though it was a clash of personalities between Willie Wilson and Ray Hamilton. They also presented it as though it was an isolated incident instead of the culmination of a long period of frustration by timber workers. And thirdly, they presented the timber workers themselves as though they were a bunch of sheep being led around by one individual instead of, as one old timber worker said, this was the first time in the union's history that the rank and file had had any democracy within their union. And this was how the capitalist press confused and distorted our whole struggle. After watching TV last night, I've heard a lot about Hamilton, I've heard him dragged through the mud. And it's the first time I've heard Hamilton's part of all this muck up that's going on now. And believe me, my whole attitude has absolutely changed. the workers continuing to work is very high but obviously it's a situation of considerable tension on plant. We 
reduced to about 85% of our production target for the year. We are putting a figure of about $7 million on this. The important thing about it, of course, is uh, apart from the fact that there may be some delay in, in deliveries of goods to the uh, domestic market, this all comes off exports. The company has existing financial problems and of course uh, the effect on our cash flow at the present time is extremely serious. I think we'd have to look at the compulsory conference, committee of inquiry, that sort of uh, action at the stage. The Tasman Company has been in negotiations with the government for some time now on its financial situation. Is the government concerned that this continuing uh, business with the timber workers is aggravating that situation? Oh yes, very concerned. Tasman could be in, it's, be, it's an open issue that they have had certain financial problems and indeed the media have reported Mr Templeton met them this week. Um, the question, if, if there is a prolonged industrial stoppage, this would be detrimental to Tasman, which after all is one of New Zealand's leading companies. I understand that the Federation of Labor have been requested to look at it, which I think is the appropriate thing. They've got a problem in the domestic side of union administration, and to that extent FOL can probably act more quickly, more responsibly than I could. But I cannot allow the situation to drift if it has deteriorated again this morning. This meeting is orderly. It is only for striking timber workers. Could I please ask all other unions who are not guests to please leave the room, including those working people who have been railroaded down here from the Waipa Mill. Yeah, about time you got moving. We know who you are. Leave the hall and make it easy. Otherwise, delegates from all job sites will go through you and then we will call in the police to remove you from this meeting. happened was that Giesler, the president of the South Auckland branch, had been to Auckland and had a meeting with Sir Thomas Skinner, the president of the Federation of Labour. He brought back certain proposals and put those proposals to the mass stock work meeting. We've decided to stay out indefinitely. Why? Um, we want the resignation of Hamilton and Gray. What were the FOL's proposals? The FOL's proposals were um, Basically, that it was just verbal. It was a autonomy within the South Auckland branch. It would to be to have our own um, welfare fund, a slice of the uh, union fees, etc., uh, etc. Et you didn't uh, like that. Uh, the membership discussed it thoroughly. Whether I liked it or not wasn't the point. That I didn't speak during this time, except chaired the meeting, and we came to the position that uh, right as of now, that the membership rejected the proposal at this stage. That we're prepared to join up now with the South Auckland branch in a frontal. Um, meeting for the Federation of Labour. And what are you going to do now? We are going to march on the union office right now. And you're holding me up. I've been excluded. 
first hit. <laughs> carry out activities which are anti-worker, in total. But they've been elected by the union. Have they? Are you saying they haven't been? They have, they have had an election, whether it's by the members or what. We ha I don't see any role in the union. Are you saying they've had no democratic election as called no. for by the union rules? The union rules were written by him. But would you say that your union decision today was democratic? Yes. Under the under union rules, you have to take a secret ballot on a strike. Did you take one today? No. Why not? Because the membership didn't ask for it. But was the membership there? It was, uh, some of the membership was excluded. The striking membership was there and that we were deciding our own destiny. Do you think that it was democratic to exclude the striking membership? Yes. From the union? They saw it democratic to come in on a vote and then uh, to go back to work. So it just shows you by statements that are said of how such is very pathetic when you see such a large number of people have been led along by propaganda, by lies and by misstatements that will all be clarified over a period of a few weeks. Mr Gray and Mr Hamilton have both said this afternoon that they won't resign. Where does that leave you now? That leaves us right now with um, uh, on an indefinite stoppage. When Skinner discovered that his plans had been rejected by the mass stop work meeting, he uh, rang me up <laughs> and uh, spoke to me, called me Willie, and I knew who it was. I called him Tom, and uh, he said, where are we at? And I said, we're at an indefinite stoppage. I don't know where you're at. And he said, well, I've got to get down to um, Christchurch because the freezing workers are giving me trouble. He said, uh, I could get up to see you in a month, how would that do? And I said, then, well, we'll be waiting. We're not going to go back to work, we've rejected uh, your plans. And he read his voice rose on a quite a high pitch and he said, but the Prime Minister Muldoon's been on my back and I've got to get you back to work. And so, of course, then he decided on the phone there, he made instant decisions to send Knox to Christchurch to settle the freezing workers dispute. It became secondary to ours and uh, waited in Auckland to meet us the next afternoon. I don't understand that being up where I'm here. Good. 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 Good.
Weatherstone uh, Redwood, I think, isn't it? Yeah. There's a mass stop work meeting tomorrow morning in Rotorua at the Sports Drome to be addressed by Sir Thomas Kenno to put certain proposals to the membership. And are you hopeful that that will settle a dispute? Um, am I hopeful it will settle the dispute? Uh, are you happy with Sir Thomas' proposals? Has he put them to you this afternoon? Uh, yes. So yes. you're fairly confident the men will be back to work tomorrow? I couldn't say that. The decision is the membership's. We were pretty hopeless by that stage. So I think the circumstances in, in, a, in, a, in a heat on all of us, didn't they? They really had its pressure on us on the combined council. We were really affected and, I, and we were just at that stage down and we had it build up and we saw the future, another building stage. Can we um, get up there? But uh, yeah. they've been on strike, as I say yeah, earlier, with the police incident there, and um, they were starting to weaken. We've been attacked for the full duration of our strike by scabby official them, and they're trying to and um, it's trying to weaken the rank and file. It's obvious to uh, us uh, anyway that uh, particular sites were starting to weaken. Uh, guys were starting to scab, getting wretched, neighbour coming on the site and doing jobs that two workers should have been doing. I know this was bloody happening when you get uh, bosses intimidating. So uh, in the Kaula area, we were feeling the pinch and so far as uh, we had a welfare organisation going. But to us, this didn't compensate for the money that had to be paid out, the rents and so on. And, and this showed a weakening right across the board. And on top of that, we had a, a concrete thing from Skinner. During the meeting, there were some uh, strong words being said by uh, all the job site delegates. And uh, after summing up, uh, Sir Tom uh, was able to uh, gain support from uh, Kinley's workers that we returned to work. The FOL had gotten support of us and uh, gave us a six-point uh, plan, and we decided that uh, that was the culminating, that they have to have their chance to uh, run that through because we never ever had before. The FOL talked to us, they refused to talk to us, uh, to us up to that point. That's correct. And, they, and Skinner refused to come down and do any That's mass correct. meetings and he turned around, he did a somersault mm -hmm. and he ended up getting, inviting me to Auckland, coming down here to speak to all the mass workers and he tabled a six point plan with a full backing of the Federation of Labour saying these words to the mass meeting. You will have democracy within 10 days. And the uh, recommendation was that we return to work to allow Sir Tom Skinner to uh, arrange uh, meetings with the New Zealand uh, Civil Workers uh, Council. And uh, because uh, of his request, the uh, motion was put by the uh, Kinley's workers that we return to work, and it was carried. The uh, shift workers will start on their normal day shift tomorrow and the day workers will start at their normal time tomorrow morning. Do you think the strike of the last couple of weeks has been justified? Yes, totally. Why? Because it strives for democracy within an organisation. But they said they'd stay out until the men resigned. Well, they've got a compromise proposal which has been accepted, put to them by the uh, by the uh, Federation of Labour and the and the branch officials plus the council, Can the, you the, the uh, delegates council. Did you believe them? I didn't believe them personally because I know the record of the trade union movement and trade unionists that are paid officials. But uh, it was enough that this situation had to be developed so other workers could see the exposure of this official. Did you express your doubts to the timber workers at the meeting? No, I didn't express my doubts to the timber workers at that meeting because Skinner got, got up and so faithfully put the proposals forward and ranked and raved and how he had fixed things that I felt that, you know, the exposure, if I got up, it would have been hostile and me being a communist would have gone against myself in any case. So the preferable thing was for the Skinner himself to sell out. What were your plans for further action if he did sell out? I don't think anyone at this stage was, uh, had even considered any further past the point of his six-point plan that he had guaranteed us. On 
I return to work, of course, uh, the, uh, I think the, on our particular side in Waipa, the management probably uh, thought that this would be a chance to test our strength. But directly after that, they suspended one of our delegates, uh, John Crean, who is a driver's delegate, uh, over the issue of uh, deduction of our union fees. It had already been put through some two or three weeks earlier on all job sites that the management uh, refused to deduct our union fees and that the money was not to be channeled back to the uh, South Auckland branch. And, uh, when he went up to investigate why our union fees were still being deducted, uh, they uh, terminated his uh, employment at Waipa. Well, when he was sacked, the CCD saw this as a provocation and a test of our strength because the management at Waipa well knew that we had a resolution on the books that if there was any victimization of any delegate, that there would be a stop work on all sites. So when the CCD got the news that John Crean had been sacked, we immediately called the members of the CCD together and instituted a series of stoppages on all the sites to have John Crean reinstated. Yeah, well, they called a meeting and uh, it was discussed this problem with uh, Crean over at Waipa there. And Darcy got up and said that first of all, he'd like to take a vote on whether or not we should allow Willie and the CCD in. Uh, they had a vote. Uh, apparently it was a lost. Uh, then uh, Darcy saw fit to close the meeting down without even discussing the bloody problem of Crean at all. Uh, this uh, prompted our uh, management at Waipa to uh, sort of dump it joint, which they did actually. Uh, they were running around the site telling everybody that we hadn't gained any support. And uh, because of this, this sort of uh, showed management at Waipa that the uh, CCD support was starting to uh, dwindle a bit. In spite of being knocked back at Kenleith, and this was a very serious blow to, the, to everybody's morale, we still decided to go ahead and institute a series of stop work meetings, of stoppages, of work to rule, and of overtime bans to get uh, John Crean reinstated at Waipa Mill. However, all these attempts failed because we didn't have the support of the biggest side of all, Kinleith. And it was then that our attention turned to the forthcoming National Conference of the Timber Workers Union, which we knew was to be opened and addressed by the President of the Federation of Labour, Sir Thomas Skinner. Agree to a 24-hour stop work meeting today to show Skinner, while he may forget parts of his agreement, we as timber workers don't. Demonstration was against uh, the Silent Night of Federation Labour President Skinner, who promised us union and democracy within 10 days, and this was six weeks later and he had done nothing. The conference was discussing these men and calling them the rabble. And that was the general attitude of conference, that they were just a rabble. And uh, it was very hard to hear what the members of the conference were saying to each other because of the noise and the demonstration outside. And if it had continued as it was, there's no doubt that the conference would have had to adjourn. And in the finish, Tom Skinner, he said, I'll go down and talk to him. I appeal to you to leave it alone at this stage. You may your papers, but you may your feelings known. Go nice and quietly away and leave me to it. OK? Thank you very much. We want to work with you. Thank you very much. 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 Thank to the national office. And we agreed on that point that we'd give him his last chance. So I asked the men to regroup and march away. He gave him his chance and he went back inside and we learned later what he said. Here's a quote from our official union journal. He said, this is a good union. In spite of what people say, the way it's run, it has always been in the hands of its members. Two years later, Still we got nothing, even a snail could move faster than that. The workers are convinced that the employers, the government and the FOL are all part of the same machine. What was in it for the FOL? The FOL stabbed us in the back because, and hung on to Hamilton because if our movement had been successful, it would have been an example to all other workers. 
and put a lot of paid officials' jobs in jeopardy. The immediate reaction from the workers was that they would immediately walk off. Uh, this was encouraged by the fact that uh, the week previous, the Tasman had already taken a 24-hour protest because of Hamilton and Gray walking onto the site, and this gave the UIPA workers encouragement. When we saw Hamilton walk on the site, we decided to hold a stop work meeting. Uh, unfortunately, when we called a stop work meeting, a lot of our, our members were threatened by management and were failed to turn up to the meeting. It was then decided to walk out and protest uh, for 24 hours. Uh, we did our level best as delegates to try and convince them that this was a dangerous move. Because we'd already been delivered the uh, warning notices and it was directed that if we did take further action, we would be uh, we would be given our dismissal notices. However, the workers decided that uh, because Tasman adopted the uh, resolution that was passed uh, in the CCD uh, executive, that they would carry on with the 24-hour uh, protest. They did this, and of course, when we arrived, the 130 or 150 workers arrived the next morning. Our dismissal notice was given to us which resulted in our sacking. pretty certain that our chairman, uh, Willie Wilson, uh, would have tried hard to um, drum up this support. But I think, uh, being honest, I think he would have had problems. He would have had great problems. So, uh, was reluctantly, I uh, sort of uh, went along with the idea of looking for legal support. I was one of the, those that were sacked, and uh, being head delegate, or senior delegate of the White Party, Sawmill. I uh, was chosen. I was chosen to take this matter to court as a test case. The um, New Zealand Forest Service uh, representatives were there, and of course our uh, friend uh, Mr. Richardson, president of the New Zealand Timber Workers, sitting sitting right in the middle of them. Uh, once we saw him there sitting there, well, it gave us the impression, or it even sort of uh, confirmed, confirmed our thoughts that right along the line, right up until our dismissals, right up until the time of the industrial court sitting, that there was, must have been some link between our union officials and management. And of course, our case was wiped by the, by the industrial court. They, uh, they stated that there was no way that we had a foot to, footing to hold on. They stated that uh, the New Zealand forestry was justified in uh, giving us our dismissal notices. OK, you haven't got the answer. You see, we've still got Hamilton and Gray, massive struggles. That doesn't mean to say we've got to let up. Our argument was sack Hamilton and Gray. That was our biggest mistake. Because if you sack Hamilton and Gray, you've still got the same union structure. You haven't changed anything. And it would only be a matter of time by me putting you or somebody else in there, like groups of workers putting you in there, before you went rotten too. Because had we kept up the point of union democracy, people would have realised that they had problems with their own organisation. Instead, we narrowed the field down, 
to ourselves, to our own officials. We thought the problem stayed with us and we put up a slogan, Sack Hamilton and Gray. We learned through struggle that it is necessary that we have strong unions. And the only strong union organisation you can get is for the workers to have rank and file control of it. There we were, island people, Māori people, um, Czechoslovakians, Palmies, you name it. And at the leader of all of this was a half-breed Maori, Irish, Scotch and name any other race in the world. I was it, you see, and it, they couldn't bash the Pommy union leaders anymore in the rank and file, you know. We had a homegrown one here. When the rank and file on a job take action over grievances that have never, ever been alleviated for years and years and years, and you go off the job, it's called wildcat. Wildcat, the employer screamed. The paid officials of unions say they're wildcatters. Commie bastards are leading them astray. The fucking Reds are taking over the country. They're doing this, they're doing that to workers. But in my opinion, wildcat is the expression of the rank and file workers of the lack of union democracy. That there is no union democracy at all. So they've got to take to the streets or walk off the job to bring it to the notice of their fellow workers and workers in general. And that's what we did. The reason why our struggle was so important is that what started out to rid the union of two paid officials ended up a fight against the whole capitalist class and the capitalist system. <laughs>